And it wouldn't be a Rangers Rabble podcast if we weren't at least two minutes late. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome along to your pre-match build-up here on the Rangers Rabble podcast. We are live on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, X, whatever Elon Musk wants to call it these days. We are live on all those platforms. So whatever platform you're watching on, help support by following, liking, subscribing, sharing, and um, all that good stuff. Rangers are back. This genuinely feels like the longest international break of all time for some reason. And I, I suppose if you probably go back in through old podcasts, we probably say the same thing after every one, don't we? Probably after every single one. But this one did feel like we've just gone through the close season. It feels like it's like been May and now it's we're back into August. It's just felt so long. Um, I'm not a massive fan of international football. I, I watch it, but it, it doesn't it doesn't do what this does to me, uh, so I'm just so glad it's back and uh, really looking forward to it. Has it been the same for you, Craig? Because I know that you are a fan of international football. I know that you take your international football pretty serious, so does the break feel as long for you? I think it felt longer because we didn't have the game before We didn't have the game before the international break. Uh, I think if we'd had the Dundee game, it probably wouldn't it would have still felt quite long, but maybe not as long. Um, and yeah, it was one of the it was the first international break in a while that we were probably all happy to have a bit of a break um, to get some of our players back. Um, but yeah, glad glad once the uh, once the last internationals were done in the week. Um, I, I mean, I like my football and anyway, I'll mm. find any any sort of football on the telly. I'll find it and and I'll watch it. Um, but international football the last couple of years hasn't been as good for me. Just fell out of love a bit. But obviously, Rangers has, uh, has has kept that void going and uh, glad to be back today and and hoping for a entertaining 90 minutes well I, I just want to win i'm not gonna lie he's both I, I, I obviously preferable if it's entertaining and, and rangers go out and put on a show and win six or seven or eight or nine or ten or fifteen now and um, that would be outstanding but i really just wanted three points to be honest and obviously we're playing hibs today at ibrox and you're starting 11 as jack butland and goal a back four of james tavernier Connor goldson john Suter, and borna barisic and then a midfield free of Lundstrom, Diomande and Todd Cantwell. And then a front free of Scott Wright, Silva and Serial Dessers. We'll hear from the manager in a wee second, Ian, but talk to me about that team. Now, I know he said yesterday we had players coming back, but they, they were not ready to, by the looks of it, none of them were ready to start. So... We've gone with the best we can go with at that point. Uh, Borno was going to come in for Ridvan. I don't think there was any doubt about that. I mean, I know there's been talk of the possibility of Rid, uh, Balogun possibly starting there. Davies at a long shot, but Davies hasn't started a game under Clement. I don't even remember the last time he played, even if it was before Clement. Um, and Sterling, I don't think we'd risk him. We need him because he has been one of our outstanding players over the last few months. So the risk in putting him at, at left back now would have been a bit much. Um, so just hopefully born what, what, what do you mean by risk him at, at left back? You talk about injury uh, wise, you talk about out of position wise. We you talk about a bit of both. Because A, again, I know he's played in multiple positions. Left back isn't his natural position, um, uh, but I don't think that would bother him too much. Um, because I think as the joke says, where's your favorite position? Yes. Um, but he's just coming back from injury. Then to make him play in a position that's not his own maybe is a bit too much. So I don't I don't ever think he was ever in contention to play there. Um and, and Bourne is fit and ready to go. So we've all been up and down on, on, on Borner and just hopefully we get the confident Borner now that he seems to have sorted his future out allegedly. Uh, maybe that will change the way he plays. So um he's not my only worry is he's not gonna want to do anything to, to hurt himself between now and the end of the season, quite obviously. Yeah, just a quick side note, Craig, actually. Um, I know we're supposed to be building up to the game today, but just as uh, Ian mentioned, Dujon Sterling there, opportunity for him to possibly go and represent Jamaica. Uh, I, I don't think it would be, you know, too overly critical to say that he's probably not going to get anywhere near that England team, uh, maybe in the future, but at the age that he's at, the opportunity to go and play for Jamaica. His mum and dad are both Jamaican. Too difficult for him to turn down if he gets offered it. Yeah, of course. Um, I mean, with all the will in the world, he's not going to get anywhere near that England team because it's probably 
at least five or six players in that in that sort of position that, that would be picked ahead of him. I mean, look recently, we got probably the best goalkeeper in the UK and he gets nowhere near, even when one of the three England keepers that gets picked is then injured, he still gets nowhere near the squad. Um, so I think, unfortunately, if that was an option, then you could argue that by now, Tavernier should have probably been called up at some point, even to, to the squad with the sort of outputs that he has. Um, so, yeah, Sterling's not going to get anywhere near um, the England squad, even if he has an absolutely storming season. So, for him, if he's got an opportunity to go and play international football um, for Jamaica. It's, it's one that he should he should grab with both hands and, and absolutely go for it. I mean, that's us assuming that he would pick England over Jamaica. He might not. He might, he, Jamaica might have been his, his, first, his first choice. So, just on that left back then, Spock, Craig, I'll come, I'll come to you, because it seems to be, I mean, <laughs> there seems to be a lot of talk about Roof. And a lot of talk about Scott Wright, who we will come to in a wee second. But was there any other option apart from Borna for you? Um, he is a he has a natural left back. Um, if you don't, if the if the gaffer doesn't play him and he plays a Sterling, for example, or he plays a Balogun and they make a mistake that leads to a goal, then then the questions are being asked: Why didn't you play the natural left back? Yeah, unfortunately, Borna was the only option um, for me. The only the only other possible one would have been Balogun. But again, he's not played a lot of football recently. Um, ben Davies was for me was never going to come in. Um, he's, he's sort of been been anonymous recently. I think the only the last time I remember him playing was the game in Prague when um, when he when he did play left back because Borna was out and and obviously Ridvan wasn't uh, um, registered at that point, so we had to play left back in that in that game. Um, and yeah, Sterling, I think he's what he's what he's one of the players that isn't going to play ninety minutes if you put him in at left back then at some point you're going to have to take him off to put someone else on at left back, which would have probably been Barisic. So as much as I want to see the end of Borna Barisic in, in a Rangers shirt, and I have done for a little while, because I think for, for him and for the club, it's the best thing. He is unfortunately the only option we've got today. Um, and I'm just hoping that we've got Ridvan back a week of rest. We've got Ridvan back for next Sunday. Uh, yeah. And I mean, the rest of the defence scene picks itself down to Butland and goal. Um, Tav, Goldson and, and Suter along with Barris it kind of picks itself doesn't it? It does at the moment and then it's not broke don't fix it I know they had the, the, the game against Motherwell but um, just a little bit of a blot I hope um, so yeah the back four pretty much picks itself it was just unfortunate because it would have been obviously Ridvan that would have been there as well um, just unfortunate that he gets his call up to the Turkey team and, and gets an injury which is just our luck for this season altogether I mean, it really is, and I wasn't really wanting to touch on that, um, Ian. But the reason that I will, and just before I do, it takes me about 18 goals to get off the couch. So there's absolutely no chance that I would be getting played before Borna, but I'd have, I'd have more grit about me and <laughs> more steel about me. But it would take me half an hour to get onto the pitch for the dressing room, so that's absolutely not happening. Um, I know, Ian, big, big blow. Um, and before we came on, I was watching the Newcastle-West Ham game. And I think Newcastle may be the only other team that's had more injuries than us because that was horrendous what I was watching. But yeah, Yelmaz away on international duty picks up that injury and it is a big blow. It is massive, massive blow because he was, but he made that left back position his absolute own. Uh, Borner was never getting a look in. I think Borner had, up until the injury, played his last game for us. I don't think we'd have actually seen him play again uh, before disappearing off to um, Turkey, allegedly, in the summer. Um, and hopefully, as as Craig's already said, that he's, he's just the fact that he's he's good to go. Just need to rest him up and keep him good for for next week. And it's not not really worth if there's any doubt at all. There's absolutely no no need to 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 risk him and lose him for what is potentially the bigger game next week. Although this is the most important one out of the two right now. As uh, definitely as and and look, looking at the midfield, Craig look. Diamondi, Lundstrom pick themselves. It's just so good to see Todd Cantwell back starting. Um, how does that midfield and front three kind of shape up together then, Craig? Because if we just put it all into the one goal, you get Silva and Dessers on the pitch at the same time, along with right and Cantwell. So is it Silva on the left, Dessers through the middle, right on the right, Cantwell sitting ahead of Lundstrom and Diamandi? Is that the way you see it working? Or what way is the manager going to play this? I'd expect so, but I think we've got the players there that can be quite flexible. So Silver can float into the middle at wide right. Scott Wright can can do what he wants to do. <laughs> we'll see what Scott Wright does today. Um, Cantwell can go wherever he wants to go. Diamande can push forward 
Um, I would like to think for most of the game that it will be Lundstrom or Diamandi that will be sort of sitting and the other one can push forward a little bit. I don't think we'll, we'll have the two. Um, Cantwell can come back if we need to. So whether we've got Cantwell or Lawrence or whoever, the manager does seem to like his front six being quite flexible and being able to sort of go back and forth. And and it's very, it's not rigid like we haven't have seen in the past where a Jack and Lundstrom, that's all they do is just sit there. Um, if it, even Dessas can drop out wide, he can, he can go wide, left, wide, right. Silver can go in the middle. So um, I think that fluidity will hopefully um, be too much for Hibs and, and, and keep them guessing. I'll tell you what, then, before we carry on, let's hear from the manager who spoke to Rangers TV um, ahead of today's game. Philippe, it feels like a, a while since there's been a game. How much do you, are you and your squad looking forward to, to getting back on again today? Yeah, it looked like ages ago that we had a game, so um, not everybody's looking forward to that. Uh, it was a good training week, last couple of days, a few injured uh, lads came back for their first training, so it was a tough puzzle with who who to have in the selection or not, because you cannot take five, six uh, players who only can play 20, 30 minutes in a selection. Um, but everybody's really up to the game. And it, it's nice to see some people back, like to have uh, up down the bench, for example. How big of a boost is that for you at such a crucial stage to see these players coming back? And how do you manage that now moving forward? Yeah, it's, it's very important because you want for sure uh, your strongest, uh, strongest team on the, on the pitch and, uh, and the strongest squad. Our strength has been that everybody was involved and everybody was giving his best. So the more quality you have uh, starting 11 on the bench, the more stronger we are. In terms of the performance from your squad today, what are you looking to see? To win the game. Um, so against Hips, we, we get really good results. But it's a team who scored a lot of goals. Uh, it's an offensive, really strong team. I don't know how they're going to play here. Maybe they come to to make a wall and, and only wait for for transitions because the, the last games when they played more open, we won with a lot of goals against them. So we will see what their game plan is, but uh, it's about us doing our things and uh, and adapting to the situation. And we have, have the experience out of the last couple of months uh, towards teams who play with a low block, what to do, and uh, against teams who go, go full in. So we will see what they will do. I mean, just before we come back to the manager's comments, I will quickly read out the Hibernian team. It's <clears throat> Marshall in goal, Fish, Johan, Newell, Caden, Maizain, Lafondre, Emiliano, Obita, Ranites, and Rocky. Not, not a lot of their names mean anything to me. Um, and I don't mean that disrespectfully. I just I don't know <laughs> how many of Hibs players. So I don't know how strong that is. The one name, I, I don't even know if he's on the bench. Martin Boyle is on the bench. Um, he's the only he's the player that that Craig. If we're just talking about Hibs for a second, he's the player that kind of can put the fear into us a wee bit because he has been good against us in the past, but clearly not fully fit. But in terms of that Hibs squad, I don't really know what to expect. Like the manager yeah, was saying, he does seem to have a good game. Um, it's even worse when the squad isn't in any sum of order. I think I'm assuming they were in number order. Um, because the <laughs> the sort of names went all over the place there. Um, yeah, there's, there's sort of a couple. I mean, Lafondra, um, he's quite well known down in England from his time um, in, in the sort of championship. So um, I, I was surprised he's still he's still knocking about. Um, I, he, he must be getting on a bit, but he, he's he's always had a little bit of quality um, about him. But yeah, I mean, we should all be. I'm just looking at the uh, the the sort of team and the and, and the subs bench now. Um, even if the first eleven aren't aren't doing what they should be doing. Um, the bench is probably the strongest I've seen it. It's probably the strongest, strongest I've seen it in quite a while. Yeah, so I think we'll leave the, the Hibs chat um, um, there. Ian, just just again, the point I put to Craig about how we're going to how we're going to set up um, going forward. One of the biggest problems we've had um, is scoring goals. Um, we look at we we are looking at Dessers and Silver for our goals. Um, Silver not that out and out number nine. I think we would all agree. Dessers is Dessers. Um, however, Silver coming back, Ian, from a very successful international break, hoping that he's playing in a position that's probably more familiar to him. Yeah, the positions that he's played for his le that left hand side, he's looked better. He that seems that he does look a lot more confident, a lot more 
Uh, he has, seems to be calmer out there as well, knows what he wants to do, manages to do it. He, I mean, decent still through the middle, but I think a far better player out on that left-hand side. As you say, this is his this is. But I think we will get uh, the best. I think yeah, the last time we played against Hibs, uh, uh, Silver played out on the left-hand side, and I think he had a fairly decent game that night, managed to score. Um, so much more the same of that. Uh, Dessas, hopefully the the um, the second game he played for Nigeria gets the, the horrendous miss out of the system for the next couple of weeks. I'm pretty sure everyone's seen it by now because uh, I know that there's a, a whole bunch of people from another part of Glasgow who are more than happy to put that on uh, Twitter or X to to show us how bad Dessas is, even though we already know. Um, so, But uh, Dessas on his day, he can score. Um Hopefully we get the the, the decent Dessers today. Who's coming back with a point to prove? Um, but I think, like Craig said, you can interchange them because they can both do it. And Dessers Dessers can pass a ball. We know Dessers can pass a ball. He's played some brilliant passes through, um, so that might work out work quite well in our in our favour as well. Don't need to forget the guy on the other side. He does have something in him. Maybe if we can just hypnotise him to make it think it's Hamden that he's playing at, we might be all right. Oh no, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Is that me sacked? Um we'll come to him in just a wee second, take right. Just finishing up, just finishing up uh on silver. There's been a lot of talk about Rangers trying to get him in permanently and stuff like that. Uh, do you think he needs a run of games on the left hand side of the park? Do you think playing him through the middle? And I get what Ian's saying and and ter- and it- I respect you as well. That they can all interchange. They can all play different positions, and we'll touch on Campbell in a second. But but just Silva himself, does he need a bit of time on that left hand side? Does he need a run of games? Is it is it is there any use? I suppose the point I'm trying to make is playing Dessers one week, Silva the next, then Dessers, then Silva, then Dessers, and Silva. Does does that does that give him any confidence? No, you have to. I think I think the one thing for Fabio Silva for most of his career is he's needed a run of games, and probably in the position where he. He's natural, which is which is from the left hand side. I mean, he's he's more than intelligent enough to to be able to play different roles. That he can probably play wide right behind the striker up front. But his natural position, every time I've seen him, is is wide left, um, and sort of being able to cut inside. So I think it's just being able to have that run of games and and all being well. He should get that between now and the end of the season. I know we've got obviously um, Matondo as well, and we've got Seema coming back. And um, I would expect looking now at the end of March. Um, Unless something drastic happens, I don't foresee Seema playing every single game between the end of the season. I think the injury he had, he's going to come back in. He'll probably play 20 minutes today. He might get a run out next week for a bit. As the season goes on, he might then start playing more. He He's one that actually could interchange with Dessers and I think he could probably play up front because he's got, he's got the ability. Um, but yeah, I would like to think that Silver between now and the end of the season, unless touch wood, anything unforeseen happens, He's gonna he's gonna have that um, left hand side position nailed down. See where we're talking about injuries. Can I just give a shout out to my little brother um, who was obviously playing for the United's under 18s yesterday and sustained a horrendous injury. Had an operation this morning and he's recovering well. And the game had to be abandoned. So a big shout out to my brother Adam. Um, it was horrendous yesterday. So I hope you're feeling better. And if you're watching, I don't think my family don't really watch this. So. I don't really get that much support at my family, Ian, you know. But if he's watching, I hope you're recovering. I hope you're feeling better. And I hope you're back to playing football very, very soon. Um, <clears throat> okay, Ian, you mentioned him. We're kind of skirting around about the subject, so we'll bring him up. Scott Wright. I get he's not everyone's cup of tea. I get a lot of people are saying he's not Rangers quality. But there seems to be, for this game, I don't know if it's just because it's the first game back for a while, there seems to be... A Quite a reaction to him starting. Yeah, but they got to look back at the fact that the options that we've got for the right-hand side are all coming back from injury or injured. So Clement can only play with what he's got. However, Scott Wright, that's four managers now. One bought him, Stevie G. Uh, Gio played him and, and liked him, played him in a European final. Uh, Beal played him, but... You know, I think Bill would play me if I just showed that I could kick a ball in the right direction, to be perfectly honest. Um, and and now Clement's playing him as well. So he must have something. And we all know that there are those players that tend to, to be brilliant in training but can't really put that into to the match day squad. But the one thing I do like about Scott, right, is when he has got that ball, he does go 
forward. He's not thinking about going backwards. He is very direct, and he has got a bit of pace. And Hibbs' back back line isn't that great. And one person I definitely would be from the team that you read out, that uh, Rocky Bashiri. I'd be running at him all day long. And Scott Wright's got the pace and a little bit of trickery that could could cause him issues. Um, Genuinely but, thought he was Hibbs striker. Well, Rocky Bashiri, no, he's a, he's a centre back. Genuinely thought he was, because he's the last name on the list, I thought he was a striker. No, he was the centre back that Hibbs brought, that brought him in. He ran his contract down. Um, and Hibbs did, and then it triggered another year's extension, and Hibbs had no idea, so they had to bring him back into his into the squad. Brilliant. Um, but yeah, he's he's that Hibbs back four is not decent. He has got pace, he can do stuff, he can score goals. We've seen it, and as I said previously, maybe we just need to let him know that it's actually um, Hamden we're playing that the day, and he'll, he'll rattle one into the corner. I mean, I probably shouldn't have admitted that <clears throat> as I run a football podcast, but however. <laughs> Um, if nothing, I'm honest. Um, blue bells are blue. Craig is saying there are too many other options. That's why so many people don't get it. So the benches: McCrory, Lawrence, Matondo, Sima, Sterling, Balligan, King, Raskin, McCausland. We'll come on to Sima. Obviously, that's a big talking point. But Sima and McCausland both coming back from injury, not 100 percent fully fit. So where's the other options? There isn't really any. Um, I mean, Matondo. As only did not come back from injury. Seam is obviously coming back. Sterling's come back. McCausland's been running with an injury for a while. So there's four there who potentially could play it on, on the right or do a job on the right. And I think the manager alluded to it in his in his pre-match. He's got five or six players who can probably only play half an hour. Um, so you can't obviously have them all in the team if they can only play half an hour to, to sort of put 30, 45 minutes. Um, to me, as much as I don't want Scott Wright to be there, because I think, again, similar to Barisic, his... His time is, is is sort of coming to an end, hopefully, at, at Rangers. Um, the man's had more more chances than a game of Monopoly. Um, but I'd like to think that for today, he can probably do a good enough job, get the game in a position where the game is done, and then bring him off for a Sterling and a Cosland to give them some minutes. Um, the one thing he does have is he is relatively good on the ball at, at, at speed, obviously, whereas some of the other players like a Matondo tends to sort of knock the ball past and run. Um, Scott Roy does tend to have those flashes of brilliance and then has an absolute brain fart the next the next minute. I'm, I'm just hoping that we get the Scott Wright that played last time, who, who did at times look pretty pretty lively, rather than the Scott Wright that played against Aberdeen, who got come off for 10 minutes and got sent off. More chances in a game of Monopoly. I just got that there, chance cards. Uh, that's, that's actually quite good. I'm just not used to people on the rabble making decent metaphors. They just they usually get them. They usually get them absolutely wrong. Um, Ian, quick mention then. Well, I say quick. I say quick because the game's starting soon. Um, Abdallah Sima back in the squad. Obviously back training. Back in the team. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, I, I'm not really fussed if we get to see him today or not, as long as of course we're winning. Um, but just great to see the big man back. Oh, absolutely. We have missed. We have missed him. I mean, early doors in the season. I mean, even I think uh, uh, Marcus has said it himself. The first time he saw him, he was like, not, not for me. Uh, or Brian, it might have been. I can't remember. I know one of them did. Um, but then as the season progressed, they realised actually they were wrong. He's a decent player. And my God, we've missed him. Uh, so I'd like you. I don't, I'm not overly fussed if we see him today. I'd like to. But if he doesn't come on, he doesn't come on. Because obviously the, with the run-in, we need all the players to be fit and firing. So if he don't, we don't need him, then don't bring him on. Um, if we're three or four up with 10 minutes to go, yeah, bring him on, get get the minutes into his legs. Um, but other than that, I, I, I wouldn't really be that bothered if he didn't start. It's just to get him back in the fold and start playing again. Um, and I can't wait to actually, once he is ready to go, seeing a big man back on a pitch and doing his thing. I mean, <clears throat> 100% Craig, but I mean, I think we all do have to remember that, you know, Seema had poor games as well and he had, and he had poor touches and, we moaned and groaned about certain things that he'd done, but you can't argue with the guy's numbers. And if we can get him back to anywhere near the level of fitness that he was at, huge, absolutely huge. Yeah, I mean he had purple, he had purple patches of form, but the one thing he did have was he never stops running. I mean there was that game in Prague where he was outstanding, just did not stop running for the ninety minutes. Um, so he, even when he's not contributing um, in, in, in an output way, he's, he's, he certainly does his, his part for the team. Um, I'll, I'll be really glad to have him back. But again, similar to what Ian said, 
this isn't the sort of game where you're throwing back in um, unless absolutely needed. Um, I would like to think that he'll he'll get, and I think that this manager is a lot more on board with it. He will he will give him minutes when he needs it. He will then bring him out of the team if he's if he's struggling. He's done the same with Lawrence, done the same with Campwell. Um, I just like to think that I would like to think his minutes will be sparing between the end of the season, just just for his benefit, um, right, even greater than greater than what the team needs. A start point there, Ian, the goal threat which we are absolutely desperate for because if Dessler doesn't inform today, if Silva doesn't get us the goals, I don't really know where else the goals are coming from because Tav's goals have dried up because the manager's got him playing in a slightly different um, way that he was playing and there's not a lot on the bench in terms of goals. No, well, but that midfield three, they've, they've all contributed. Uh, Lundstrom, admittedly, the last time he did score was against Hibbs. So, you know, nice segue. The uh, <laughs> day, um has got a couple, so we, we know he can, we he, he likes a shot from distance, so we know he can he can do that. And Cantwell's always a danger, um, and it seems to be the more that Hibbs riled Cantwell up, the more he uh, likes to get a goal as well. Because I remember them doing that to him at Easter Road as well, and then him firing back with a goal. So the, the, there are goals around the team. Um, admittedly, we do need that 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 man up front, that target. Um, but again, it's sort of uh, sort of more of a cat and mouse, isn't it? Do you do you throw him in because he is that target man, or do you? And take the risk that it might actually upset the injury and, and cost us him again for what is left of the season, or just um, hope that today that Silver and Dessers actually have the shooting boots on, or as James Alexander says, the old reliable to have penalty. Well, <clears throat> I guaranteed that because apparently there's been some podcasts released recently that prove bias. Um, I haven't yeah, seen yeah. them. I haven't seen them, but apparently it's unequivocal. So we should be getting that penalty then if it's unequivocally biased um, against one team. Um, that's, that's all I'm going to say on the matter. Um, take, let's talk about Todd Campbell again. We mentioned him briefly, but get off him back. And like the guys are saying in the comments, he has another goal threat. Um, but it's not just the goals. It's his all-round play. It's the way that he can build up play, join up play, the passes that he can make when he's on for him. One of the best players in the league. And that's him back starting. Crucial. Absolutely crucial for us. Yeah, I would argue um, when he's firing, he is the best player in the league, without without a fail for me. Um, I think he's he's a phenomenal footballer, um, likes the rough and tumble of the game as well, so is, isn't scared of getting in, isn't scared of a tackle. Um, but yeah, it's a massive thing for for me to have him back, um, and I'm just glad that he's now all being well, um, fully fit, uh, back in the team on on firing on all cylinders and uh, perfect perfect time ahead of next weekend. Oh, listen, 100%. Right, OK, and in terms of the game today, I know I mentioned it at the start, all I want is the three points, et cetera, et cetera. But in terms of building confidence, in terms of building that camaraderie within the squad, which is a really difficult word for me to say, by the way, um, how important is the performance today for you? Personally, I'm with you. I just three points is all that matters right now. And to between now and the end of the season, if I if it was dull, boring, one nils between now between now and the end of the season, I'll take it because that means we win every game, we win the league. Um, so three you points. Don't, you, don't, you don't tend to get away for a, a set run of games playing dull, boring football. You always tend no. to get caught. You do. You do tend to get caught, but I mean, it's just a. Um, I'm not overly fussed about the performance. If we get both brilliant. But the most important thing at the end of the day at any football match is, is, is winning. And um, the three points, particularly at the moment, is all important because we need the three points today, which puts pressure on another lot tomorrow and seeing if they can handle that issue that uh, we've, we've struggled with. Um, and they've never really had to worry about it at this point of the season. Uh, even when we won the league, we didn't have to worry about it at this point of the season because we'd already won it. It was the 7th of March or something. Um, for memory stretch. So this is the first time in a long time it's been like this. So as much as we all love a great performance and as, as much as we love to see the silky stuff, get the game won and then try all the all the, all the the stuff that, to make it entertaining. As uh, like um, Mr. Mackay said when he was here, tricks are for the circus. Let's get to the circus first and then we can do all the tricks. <laughs> well, in terms of the actual, that's actually the point there, Craig. In terms of pressure, I mean, we cannot, under any circumstances, drop points today. I know, and look, we can have this conversation in the first game of the season. We can have this conversation halfway through the season or with two games to go. It's always going to be the same answer, and I get that. But there are certain points 
throughout the season where you literally cannot drop points. And today is one of those days. Yeah, business end of the season. Um, squeaky bum time, as they used to call it. Um, like Ian said, this is the first time in... I mean, uh, I would imagine that every single player in that other squad have never had this pressure because they've always either had the league sewn up by this point or we've had the league sewn up by this point. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how they how they react tomorrow. But for us, all we need to do is take take care of our own game for the next nine games. If we do that, we win the league, no matter what happens elsewhere. Um, we can't even expect any any favours from elsewhere, anything to happen. I'm expecting we win every we win every game, they win every game apart from two. That's that's my expectation. So we just need to take care of our own. The problem we've had in the past is we have buckled under the pressure because we probably had one eye on another game or the pressure just got to us. Today we need to come out flying first 15, 20 minutes, get the game won, get the game over and done with, and then just put the performance in for the rest of the game that then gives the other lot a bit of worry ahead of tomorrow. Is that something you can see us doing, Ian? We're not really, we don't really seem to be that team that flies out the traps and demolishes a team and it's over before you know it. We tend to be one of those teams who go to its own supporters. Bear ways, we'll get there. We'll get there, bear ways, bear ways. Right, don't panic yet. Don't, stop panicking. Stop pa Right, panic. <laughs> that seems to be the kind of team that we are. Yeah, that's the thing we have been uh, under previous regimes. I don't think under this manager, he's going to allow that to be the case. Um, also, on top of that, though, we've always had, like Craig said, we've always had that other game. Uh, even if you look back to the Motherwell game when we lost, we had Benfica coming up. Mm -hmm. So did we have one mind on the Thursday night? Well, I don't want to get myself out. I want to play against Benfica. We can beat Motherwell. It's only Motherwell. Well, now we don't have that. Today it's Hibs. That's all we've got. Let's go out, leave it all on the park because we've got a week to recover. So let's just do that between now and the rest of the season. I know we've got to edge one extra game in because for some reason, uh, one part of Dundee can't handle the rain, but across the road, they can handle it quite fine. But uh, that'll take care of itself. But for the most part now, it's one game a week and cup games. That's it. And there's only two of them left, hopefully. So now we <clears could throat> just need to concentrate on what game like, like one game at a time as big field's been saying but now we can properly do that for league games one game at a time we've got a week between to train and get better and get people back as well i mean i and also in in terms of pressure in terms of pressure on the rangers players putting pressure on them tomorrow we have seen how they <laughs> like to crack under pressure you've got a guest in you have a guest um i <laughs> In terms of uh, in terms of putting pressure on them, Craig, we've seen them, we've seen their manager, we've seen how he deals with pressure. Um, so getting three points a day, um, just just piling it on top of them. Yeah, that couldn't actually have been timed any better, really. Um, <laughs> for Ian's guest, now he's back. Um, yeah, that's the most important thing is um, is putting pressure on them because we don't know how they will react. I mean, we've had games where they have crumbled under the pressure. I mean, look a few weeks ago where we won. They then played Hearts and lost against Hearts. Yes, I'm expecting them to go and win tomorrow because it's Livingston. Although it's away, it's Livingston who are bottom of the league. But you never know what that what that pressure will do. And then we've just got six days of uh, six or seven days of of pressure to build up before the big one next weekend. That reminded me of. Do you ever remember years ago there was a, a guy on the news getting interviewed? Yeah. And the daughter came in and he's like, get out, Maren. That was a wee bit aggressive there, Ian. Poor Wayne. Nah, well, well, do you know what? To be fair, considering the time we started to when it actually happened, I'm surprised it happened. It hasn't started before now. Um, literally give her a lunch before we come on. She's in there asking she's hungry. That's what she came in for. I'm hungry. She just had, like, <laughs> masses of food. Definitely my daughter. <laughs> well, uh, um, well, I mean, I don't know. That doesn't sound very nice. Right, predictions, Ian, before we go. Um, I am going to go... 2-1 Silver. 2-1 Silver. Yeah. Craig. I'm going to go edgy 2-0 and Todd Campwell to get the first goal. An edgy 2-0 and Todd Campwell to get the first Um, There was, if I can find where I keep stuff, which I can't remember, Davey1642, member for 22 months. Um, Thank you very much, Davey. And, of course, if you want to become a member, you can. Um, over on YouTube, if you're watching on a computer, the join button is below the screen. If you are watching on your phone, 
The link for the memberships is in the description. And follow and share and subscribe and like and comment and all that good stuff. Just every little bit helps grow the podcast. He's saying three nil bears. So, do you know? I just I hope I hope Stephen Gillespie channel members right as well. Six one Dessers hat trick. Um, that would absolutely. Um, I hope you come on the reaction. And Ian has broke several plates. That's all I'm saying. If that happens, then you know we've had a good day. Um, so thank you, Ian. Thank you, Craig, for joining me. Um, thank you to everybody in the comments. I don't something going on with my comments today. Um, I don't think David P's been in them enough. I'm usually distracted by the comments, and I'm not getting distracted by them. Um, but and oh, by the way, if you're on YouTube, make sure you put that notification bell on because the reaction time depends on when the game finishes. So we're normally five, ten, ten minutes, maybe something's fifteen after the reaction. Um, then we go live, and I've just had a good point and but i'm going to leave it i'm going to save it for the reaction because the rabble mascot is back um and i'm going to leave it there before i go too far um so thank you all for watching and we shall see you after the game after a very very good rangers performance and an extremely good rangers win